Hello and welcome to the Perpetual Traffic Podcast. The show where we talk about how to grow and scale your brand, as well as introduce you to the fact that Hello Kitty is a female. Things that we didn't know. I'm crushed. thought it was a real kitty. I'm Ralph Burns, the founder of Tier 11. And I'm Lauren E. Petrullo, the founder of Mongoose Media. So glad you joined us today. And I did find out what the E is, which I'll reveal that just in a second here. Uh, there's a place where we can connect with you, the Perpetual Traffic listener. Where is that, Lauren that is Petrullo? on Telegram. If you go to perpetualtraffic.com forward slash Telegram, you can join the conversation where we get to carry this on beyond the episode and have some really good humans that you can interact with on a daily basis. Yeah, that's it. I think we should start a thread about what is your middle name now, but then everybody's <laughs> just going to Google it and find it. So I'm just going to blow it right now. It's Elizabeth, right? It is. It's uh, like sixth generation. There's no creativity. <laughs> queen. Should we call it the queen? Any relation to like British royalty? Yes. Any, like, is there any reason? Yeah, that's That was it. <laughs> like actually, <laughs> yes. That's it. <laughs> My family was serious blacked out of that. Wow. Yeah, there was That's an crazy. Irish marriage. Oh my god! Yeah, well, I uh, we we found out just recently. Uh, speaking of genealogy, and and uh, my father-in-law thought he was a hundred percent Italian. Last name Sorrenti. My wife's dad, obviously, mm -hmm. my father-in-law. And <laughs> he just oh, got no. the results back. He's like forty-seven percent French. <gasps> And like only like 30 something percent Italian. <laughs> so and apparently like it changes over time. Like it, it, like as you gather more and more information for these things, then they, they actually start to get, fill in more of the gaps. Sure. So he was, he was positively crushed. Just tell him he's part of a, the Roman empire and he's part Roman empire, part Napoleon. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, anyway, well, we're not going to be talking about, um, <clears throat> Uh, Ancestry.com here too long because we've got like uh, we've been looking forward to this episode for quite some time. We met these guys yeah. seems like months ago, but it was probably just like weeks ago. But uh, sitting in our virtual green room here today, we've got mm -hmm. in our series on TikTok, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a pretty awesome episode here today, Lauren. I mean, I'm pretty excited to to be talking attribution. Some of the things that I think you probably don't know about TikTok. And we're going to dispel some myths here today or have them dispel some myths because mm. we're going to become like my company, Tier 11. We're becoming more and more of a TikTok company with one of our more recent acquisitions. And because TikTok and, and uh, content creator creation, like actually pre-production is part of like what they do, which is one of the reasons why we're, we're coming together with them. And so I'm super excited to be talking to these guys today. So without further ado, uh, Shiraz Amun, Amun, I, I knew yes. I was going to mess you it up. Me. You got me. You got. <laughs> and Bahar. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> From TikTok are here. Welcome to perpetual traffic. Pleasure. Pleasure. Very Pleasure. nice to be like, here. Thank and you. It did feel like months ago, but it was actually three weeks. I, I, really? I checked the count. <laughs> was it just three weeks? <laughs> three or four weeks. Yes. I do recall the first time we chatted. Uh, and I've been a had... huge yeah, fan of the podcast. And I recently saw the metrics, like attention to performance metrics uh, series that you had uh, in July. So really pre um, happy to be here again. Speaks to Bahar's it. heart. Yeah. yeah. Big fan of the show. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we're uh, we're excited to talk to you guys today. Um, first question, tell us a little bit about what your roles are at TikTok and uh, what gets you excited about what you're doing there. Ooh. Bar. Go for it. That's your tough okay. question right there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I work in the measurement product strategy and operations team uh, here in New York. Uh, we lead, I lead a global, uh, incredibly talented group of PMMs. Uh, we work hard in bringing new measurement solutions to market and you know, continuously talk to clients to understand how are they using our measurement products, uh, what feedback do they have, and how can we improve and find you know, better ways to show TikTok's value. Um, I've been with the company for over four years. I moved around as well. I moved from London to New York uh, about two mm -hmm. years ago. 
And yeah, we're incredibly humbled to see how businesses are finding growth on the platform. And we're inspired to see um, the different pockets of growth that, that people are finding and then how we can adjust our strategy to uh, cater to that growth and build solutions to help people harvest that. That was a lot. Sa Shiraz, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> She's pretty excited about her job, Shiraz. I don't know. Four you years. Excited about your job. That was, wow. I wasn't expecting all that. All right. Uh, I'm Shiraz. Um, I lead our, I'm a, the other bookend to measurement. Uh, I lead our core ads, global core ads product team with a focus on signals or data connections, as, as you as others may know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been with TikTok coming up to almost five years. Um, literally opened the Canadian office, much like Bahar, I'm also a transplant from Toronto to, down to New York, uh, from slapping that first sticker on a window at a WeWork <laughs> to where we are now. Yeah, uh, it's, that's right. I've seen this place go from almost nobody to thousands of people working here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, I would say what keeps me motivated and keeps me excited is the continuous change. Like in five years, I've been through 12 different roles. We're constantly trying to solve different problems. Uh, we are sprinting and trying to catch up to the behemoths in the space. And I think we're, we've done a really good job so far. Uh, yeah. Much more to come, which is also what keeps it exciting. I mean, there's always oh, yeah. a, a pivot and a turn, but, but it's, it's, it's challenging, which makes it fun. Yeah. Well, it, this this is a pretty dynamic industry just in general and oh, yeah. your your platform has been changing a lot of things yeah uh and you are you are you are very far from that we work you've got like the killer studio set up and if you're not watching yeah. on youtube oh, i uh, used to you sit at a out. tilted yeah. desk with back pains going home every night. <laughs> <laughs> you got yeah we, we have we have studio envy here because i'm in like a friend's rented office and lauren's in like a warehouse i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Her well, fulfillment you thought I was in a library. For yeah. You were like, I did wow. originally. And I'm like, wait a second. Those aren't books. Those are products. <laughs> so it's a reason to go over to uh, perpetualtraffic.com forward slash YouTube uh, and obviously subscribe to that channel. But today uh, we're going to be talking about measurement. And I think a lot of people that listen to this show think of, I'm just going to say it. All right. They think TikTok is just for kids mm. and for. Uh, cool dances and occasionally selling e-com products uh, and content creator stuff. And you guys are going to dispel those myths because I think a lot of the world, a lot of the listeners here would like to use the platform more as part of their overall media mix. And they probably just don't know the stuff that you guys do. So if, if, if you are curious about how, TikTok may or may not fit into your overall media mix modeling or just your overall media mix and you're a business and or you're an agency. I know we got a lot of agency owners that listen to this show. Today is a show for you. So um, so let's talk about measurement. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. a it is a theme that we have mm -hmm. going for this entire month. And we're just going to continue it because I think it's one of the more complex topics in digital marketing and online just in general. And a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of businesses get it wrong. A lot of customers of ours get it wrong. We're sort of trying to change all that. So it's it's a big topic here. And we brought uh, the big guns. Think? Yeah. We so you guns. guys I mean, roll know this stuff better than anybody. Um, what do you think most people get wrong when, it, when, it, when they talk about measurement, attribution, the kind of stuff that you guys do day in and day out? I'll take a, I'll take a stab and then... Yeah. Um, I'll uh, hand over to Cheryl's too. But measurement is a hot topic, and it has been um, uh, from our previous. I think earlier we talked about you know how the office moved from WeWork to the um, 151 42nd uh, Street in New York. That has been an evolution in time. Um, think about it this way: our ad solutions and our measurement solutions evolved in a not dissimilar way, uh, meaning. Uh, when we first launched App Install Objective, no one would believe that TikTokers will stop scrolling and go and download an app, and we'll be able to measure that. And then, you know, fast forward, we became the fastest growing app average app platform for savvy app advertisers that year. Um, and similarly, with uh, post purchase surveys today, we're seeing that TikTok is the fastest growing new customer driver channel. 
Um, so all of this to say is that our auction and our ad buying systems are evolving. You know, today we're able to talk about automation. It wasn't always like that, right? Um, and measurement solutions are also evolving as we grow our ad solutions. And mm -hmm. also let's, um, let's admit it in a post ATT world, it's not easy feat to build measurement solutions. And, you know, we're growing, we're, we're building solutions and systems from ground up rather than, um, you know, adapting old practices or old ways of working. And some of this works to our advantage and, and some of it, it doesn't. And this is often, um, you know, it's, it's part of um, how advertisers get it wrong as well, is that, you know, we don't show up pretty well when it comes to uh, traditional click-based measurement systems. Um, multiple reasons, it's a very nuanced and layered answer to that. Um, I'll start sharing a few and then Cheryl's jump in too. But firstly, you know, multi-device usage, right? Um, mm -hmm. a, a cons a, somebody can Hospital. see an ad and then make a purchase on the website. There's immediately uh, that disconnection there. Second is, um, you know, delayed conversions. You, um, hopefully you're using TikTok and you're on the For You feed. Um, I, you know, I'm guilty of scrolling before bed, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's something that, uh, it's so engaging. It is, um, it's, it's not seen before. So you know, naturally, people do not want to ex exit that immersed behavior into uh, browsing product catalogs. Although our you know, team um, in charge of web advertising, they are also building solutions to you know, capitalize on that too, like providing video shopping ad formats that faster, that accelerate that purchase behavior. Mm -hmm. But on the measurement side, you know, we're, we have to catch up and close that gap. And now lastly, um, non-click behavior. So not only conversions are delayed, um, people aren't also clicking as much on the platform. So this is kind of a, it's, it's a principle for how we build measurement solutions. We have to keep this user behavior in mind. And then lastly, it's, you know, what we like to say is content over clicks. Advertisers are focused on building great, creative and engaging um, content. Uh, you know, measuring that with pure metrics that have been around for 20 years plus like clicks, um, doesn't do it justice. So, um, you know, we yeah. will we'll build first party solutions to help close that gap and work with partners to, you know, meet advertisers where they are. But ultimately, uh, it it just needs a different uh, approach to I would, measurement. I would say, I would say, I, I think you hit on this. I mean, and by listening to Bahar, you can say that it, measurement is a very complex, complex uh, part of performance advertising. Mm. And not a lot of people are used to the tools and the and the facilities that exist in measurement much less uh much less like understanding how to how to how to, how to translate sales into profit profitability so i would say this a lot of times people do not actually understand especially if you're new to advertising aligning uh outcomes to business objectives mm -hmm. we often get caught up in the the plethora of metrics that exist like clicks and views and click-through rates versus looking at customer acquisition costs or growing lifetime value or, or driving more people into my store as a business owner. And there are channels and there are tools that help you get to that answer. Secondly, um, and most importantly, I think this is a, the key factor here. We ignore, a lot of folks ignore the full customer journey and not actually don't understand how to track their customers and users in a manner where they understand that where people are dropping off where people are most likely engaging, uh, why they're dropping off to begin with. Um, there's a lack of cross-channel cross attribution that Bahar mentioned. Mm -hmm. Understanding people's behavior on web to mobile and where the drop-offs happen, what, what people use web for versus what people use mobile for. Um, I, I already mentioned the, the data quality and integration, but something back to what Bahar was saying is, it's, and we notice this especially with newer advertisers and newer, newer even to the channel itself. Neglecting to set clear KPIs and benchmarks, we always see a moving benchmark versus understanding what the channel itself can do for you and then testing, learning, and iterating over time to understand mm -hmm. how to better that channel for you. And then, and then finally figuring out where to place that channel in your media mix itself. Uh, too often people try to paint paint us with the same brush and they do that to every channel. So it's, it's, it's I would recommend taking the time and learning how to work with the channel's strengths and then iterating over time, leveraging the me measurement tools that the channels offer you. So with leveraging the better tools, 
that the channel's offering, like you had talked about specifically having better optimization and driving those business metrics. Like this, Ralph, you and I have been talking about this. We had John Rand talking about this. This yeah. is the whole theme. Driving <laughs> better business results all day. Drive, so driving better business outcomes on TikTok, obviously um, having that full customer journey uh, and knowing that especially newer advertisers don't necessarily know where that drop off is. Like what are the data connections that are so important and like why like how what would you say to that new person that's doing to like of like what data connections they need to connect so that they have those clear kpis and moving forward towards those business outcomes that we want right um i just want to make sure i caught that last part uh just what data connections are there to help them get guide that picture or paint that picture is that yeah is that what you're yep. asking yep well it depends so from tiktok itself or from ourselves we offer data connections across web app and offline behavior so you can track customer journeys across the board now how how thoroughly you you actually paint that picture depends on you and what i said uh and what we have is a multiple options for you to to get onboarded with tiktok in that sense you could do it direct with us and we have a uh, immersive ads manager experience that walks you through a step-by-step process on how to set up that data connection. Again, depending on whether you want to track a web user or an app user or an offline activity. Uh, if you don't have those fundamental capabilities and development resources in-house, we have multiple partners in the ecosystem that we work with. Um, you can find them through our partner repository on TikTok business website uh, that help ease that process. So something that might take you 10 steps might take the partner two or three steps. Uh, you know, we have website builders that we're partnered with. We have e-commerce platforms that we're partnered with. We have um, data uh, CDP partners that we're partnered with. So again, depending on who you're already working with, we can help ease that transition um, into that data connection. Now, why is it important? Uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll harp on it a little bit more. It's more, it's critical for understanding the full potential of your efforts on this channel. So for instance, if you're only mapping the purchase outcome, for instance, you have absolutely no idea how this person got to the purchase, where they dropped off, maybe what touch point they clicked on to get interested in buying something. All you know is we drove purchases, but you have no concept of the user journey, where they came from, why they even got to your channel. Mm -hmm. Understanding that allows you to do so much more. It unlocks other tools that we have to offer. It can help you build better targeting strategies, audience segments. Uh, those are all the things that you miss if you don't map your data connections well to begin with. So one of the things that the last time we had folks from TikTok on here, we never got to this question. And when I think of TikTok, I think of like in the company that we just acquired, most of their TikTok usage is through and for e-commerce brands. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about like a lead gen. Like how do you do this on lead gen? If the perception is, TikTok is top of funnel. There's no click. You know, I have to figure out, you know, uh, in a very smart way, maybe through a third party attribution software or, you know, through the platform that you're talking about here to be able to sort of attribute anything to its effectiveness. We see this all the time. It's like, you know, meta TikTok, they're not yeah. getting the results. Let's cut them out. But then all of a sudden, wh why do I have no sales? So there is that, but that's usually like, mm -hmm. let's stay away from like e-commerce. Cause I think people do think of, of TikTok as an e-commerce play in most cases, but lead gen, we, we have tons of lead gen clients, for sure. but I don't even think about TikTok for them. Is yeah. there something there that we can talk about that maybe our listeners don't even know that is an option yeah. uh, from a product standpoint? And I hope I, I do service. I don't do the service to our colleague, Jackie, who runs our lead gen team, but, um, I want to beat a, beat a chest or beat our chest a little bit in the to, uh, and to paint the picture. Beat You're away. We'll, we'll beat you down if only, you don't answer correctly. Only if I, he actually does right. the motions. Like does this? <laughs> the motion. I'm gonna have to go over to YouTube to see. So, it. Uh, <laughs> I wanted and I wanted to do that to paint the picture. You're absolutely right. Like we when we first started, we were you know the dancing app, uh, and that played to our favor. A lot of people came to us for that reason because they wanted to enjoy, sure. uh, you know, social versus trying to paint a, a false narrative of, of themselves or what have you. Uh, and I think we did a great job at that. It, it, it actually helped grow our user base a lot in the beginning. However, 
we've also transformed since then. Um, we are arguably the largest or the second largest network out there um, outside of um, in the world at this moment. Over a billion users. Um, that's massive. That What that does is people come to our platform for multiple things. They come for discovery, but also help you all that we have built since then options and tools to help go from discovery all the way to point of conversions across different touch points. And if you actually go through our ads manager ecosystem, we have the full funnel journey laid out for you. So it's not just e-commerce, it's not just branding, acquiring leads that can then translate into different targeting strategies, retargeting, mm -hmm. re-engagement. Uh, we have those, we have that capability built in, including native lead forms directly within the app, uh, within the TikTok ecosystem itself. So again, people don't ever have to leave the platform as Bahar was saying. Uh, we have partners built, uh, partnerships built out with multiple third party vendors, such as like Salesforce, Hootsuite, et cetera. So your leads and your CRM is connected directly to your database. Um, and then you can leverage that to build any kind of marketing strategy that you want, re-engagement, loyalty, um, you know, that comes down to how you leverage the rest of our audience targeting suite, custom audience uploads, retargeting mm -hmm. campaigns, uh, and then leveraging the power of the platform, which is the creativity in itself to help drive that outcome. All to say, we have the capabilities. Again, to your point, a lot of people don't know this about TikTok. And this is why I harp on test, learn, iterate mindset that our measurement team really pushes for all the time test with us. And this is what I said earlier uh, into your earlier question around uh, what people get wrong about measurement. I think a lot of people also get wrong about platforms is they get pigeonholed mm. uh, and they don't realize the capabilities beyond what they're comfortable with. And measurement tools actually help you <laughs> break that comfort wall because mm -hmm. they give you a box to play with an A-B yeah. test and then you get results back and then you get iter iterate off of. So, I mean, there's a growing community of B2B advertisers um, that, you know, we, we see every day um, and we see this as, as we are at TikTok, but as users too, we see the reviews, uh, we receive the emails that says at the end, hey, we're on TikTok, follow us to hear more. You know, all of that user behavior turns into ad solutions that our teams, um, you know, try to bring to market for uh, lead gen advertisers to use. Mm -hmm. And on the measurement side, it's no different than e-commerce advertisers when it comes to actually understanding does it work for me? Does it bring incremental results? Um, and, you know, I'm happy to exp expand on that um, as well. But, um, you know, overall, attribution reporting today covers lead gen advertisers as well. So you're able to see how long it takes for a lead to convert, how many touch points are there, um, and mm -hmm. soon we'll be talking about uh, assisted conversions that lead to a lead gen. Um, and then you can run incremental tests to, to understand are these uh, you know, baseline that just grows or are they incremental additional results that your business will, uh, will see in addition to third partners. Um, and again, if there is a third party measurement provider that uh, is unique to your community that you have heard of and we do not provide that uh, today, yeah. happy to hear and we grow with feedback. We'd love to uh, talk and follow up as well after the episode. We have a number of verticals that you wouldn't think of. We have a number of automotive verticals, uh, automotive advertisers who are driving into lead generation to drive. Are you stuff. saying driving in on purpose? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, uh -huh. you caught me on that, right? Uh, to, 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 to lean into test, uh, test drives yeah. uh, at their dealerships or, you know, sample sales at retailers. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember the TikTok made me buy it trend? Of course. It's yeah. a big lead in itself, right? And That's you right. sense that power. And how do you leverage that through digital uh, digital channels as well? I mean, we, we double down on both, yeah. both areas. And, and more tactically, uh, what you see is like these um, you know, large brands that have large followings that um, are very deep, lower funnel focused. They come to TikTok and perhaps they come with saturated audiences. They, they need to move up the funnel a little bit, like maybe mid funnel events, in addition to deep funnel conversions. And then they see um, better CPAs and higher ROAS. So, um, you know, we have a bank, uh, I think it was the largest bank in Brazil that came with that lower funnel um, uh, challenge. So they were basically just plateauing uh, on their performance metrics and going up the funnel, uh, opening the funnel, building 
that community and user base because you know there's a finite amount of people that are aware of your brand um, that are also in your age group or targeting group on TikTok. Um, so you know increasing that brand awareness, familiarity, consideration, and then uh, lower funnel retargeting. Uh, we see that you know that works better than just uh, going with deep funnel straight away. So. I mean, you've talked about like with the Legion example, like with a big bank in Brazil, another Legion example being like a big car dealership. Like those are Mm -hmm. big brands with a lot of team members and probably like a really, really big budget Um, with TikTok made me buy this Mercedes. (laughs) You know, actually, we have a super expensive um, Lux, uh, uh, diamond bracelet that was sold in Paris that was like 10,000 yeah. euros. Using both, that strategy? Both on TikTok. <laughs> um, no, they missed that one, but mm-hmm. you're, yeah, absolutely. So, 10,000 euros or plus, yeah. Te- like 9,000. Uh, do, you, do you have examples of like smaller business brands or what they've been sure. able to achieve with success in these type oh, of, of performance measurement? For sure. Um, a lot of e-commerce brands actually as well. <laughs> Surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the, it, it's, it's more to understand the incremental flows that you can get into, into, into your user base. I think we were discussing a bit earlier, um, you know, what happens when prospecting goes away and you only start focusing on retargeting all of a sudden your customer base is starting to shrink. Yeah. So, right. A, a lot of brands are leveraging us. Your ROAS is good. Yeah, ROAS is good. For but all of a only that, so long. Exactly. <laughs> and, and then that line it starts doesn't. to dip quite a bit. Right. So, um, for for us, what we're trying to give is give you a full funnel array of solutions that help you drive more of that incremental user. So we already know that we can drive new users, net new users to your platform that a lot of other channels don't have. Um, beyond that, well, how do you now keep those users engaged? How do you keep them around? Uh, so we've seen e-com brands leverage new leads and then try to deploy retargeting strategies, not just across us, but also across other channels. And 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 coming back to looking at what is the ultimate uh, measurement, which is the customer acquisition cost, is that declining? Mm-hmm. And which channel is giving you the most highest value customer? Mm-hmm. Um, so again, people who are running out of brand, uh, cu- customers, running out of sources to get new customers, especially smaller brands, you don't have big marketing budget. So you're, when, you're, when you're retargeting, you're effectively going after the same user over and over again. Um, yeah. And I want to highlight also, you know, uh, we've seen a, a whole new um, era of you know, growth marketers that came to TikTok to find growth. And there are certain, you know, TikTok first businesses that I'm sure you've also heard For of. Sure. Uh, and we can, yeah, we, th- you know, that is just incredible to see as product teams. Mm-hmm. We watch and learn from those businesses and scale the tactics that they use as products and solutions for, you know, the, the overall ecosystem to grow. Um, and, you know, when it comes to, is there a simple formula? Uh, unfortunately not. And when it comes to measurement, it's, 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 it's the same principle. There isn't a single source of truth. Um, there are multiple sources and they will, you know, if you don't have a strategy, they will all say different things. Um, and then the goal is to get them to say the same thing or at least directionally aligned so that you can, um, you know, calibrate and triangulate. Um, yeah. When you say calibrate, I'm just like, yeah, match my bank account. <laughs> I, mean, I think I think you hit on a good point there. Right? A lot of folks jump directly to, "Where's my ROAS? Is my ROAS good? Is my CPA good?" And, and we lose sight of the bigger picture. Is like I'm trying to build a sustainable long term business, and this is for everyone: mm-hmm. small businesses down to large enterprise businesses. Large enterprises obviously have more budget to play with, so their their risk thresholds are a little bit larger, mm-hmm. per se, and they have better channel mixes. But for small businesses. ROAS can't just be the end goal, right? If you want a sustainable business, you have to understand where different sets of customers come from, which customers are the most valuable to your business. If you're not thinking of that, you are, you're fighting a dying battle where that ROAS curve starts to drop and then you are stuck. You're, you're, you're basically stuck. And you can't climb out of that hole. No, quickly. it's like the, the person that like when you've juiced the lemon so much and they're like, there's, there's nothing Left. Correct. Like, well, I've seen With that happen a lot. Costs on CPMs, and once once we hit holiday season and CPM costs start to rise, oh, that that is where where people really start to see holiday season, uh, political season, yeah. every yeah. reason that people are just spending money to spend money, and I'm like, oh, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. 
these auctions are sensitive. The auction pressures are sensitive. One big, once big advertisers come in and start to start to rise that CPM, your bottom lines don't look as good anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, if you've got a CMO or a CEO that you're reporting to, that's that's hugely problematic. Uh, so, tell us about any new products. Like what else? What else is coming out? Anything like in alpha or beta testing? Anything that's like most people don't think of TikTok as a full funnel platform. It really so. Like what, I mean, obviously we've been talking about that here for the last 20 minutes or so. But the point is, is like what other tools, what things can you sort of reveal here that maybe people don't know about TikTok and maybe have them even yeah, I reconsider it if they've tried it in the past or sort of have you guys pigeonholed in a certain way? I can I can speak to the, the, the data connections and pipelines and, and the different opportunities that we have that people may not have known. And I'm sure mm -hmm. Bahar can also speak to all the measurement uh, all the new measurement iterations that mm -hmm. we're coming up with. So from, from a signal perspective, from a data connection point of view, everyone understands what a pixel is, but we also now have server to server capabilities. We also have uh, gateway capabilities, which is a bit more of a, a reduced server to server <laughs> path. Let's, let's call it like a, a less, less, uh, less labor intense integration for smaller advertisers. So what would take you maybe two to three weeks or, four weeks of dev work could be reduced to a few hours or a few days. Um, we have multiple partnerships, as I mentioned a bit earlier, with not just your big commerce players, uh, but also your CDPs, your data platforms. And, and now we're also opening up website builders. So if you can think from WordPress to Wix to Adobe's to the Squarespaces of the world, um, and beyond that, going to regional partners. So you can think of all of the major tier one partners have capabilities of connecting with connecting with TikTok. But we're also diving down into the regional partners, um, depending on where you're in the world. And to what Bahar said earlier, if you know if there's a partner that you don't see on our website, mm -hmm. tell us. We will mm -hmm. we will go and get that deal done and make sure that we have that that option available for you. So the, um, the gateway side, though, like when you're like pixel gateway server side, the gateway mm -hmm. is like that interim because it's like obviously pixels and s stuff are going away. So uh, I would say there, there, there are three, um, three ways that you can integrate with us. Uh, direct connections, which is obviously, um, you know, direct engineering work on your website or on your server takes the longest and the most amount of effort and dev work. If you have big businesses would rather do that. We also have partner integrations that reduce that that barrier to entry. So, you know, Google Tag Manager, Tilium Segment, Shopify partnerships, uh, you name it, we have them. Um, again, complexity of development work leaves. Now, if you do want to do a direct integration, we have a what I would call a softer touch solution than a full end-to-end -end integration, which which happens through the gateway. We're testing gateways at this moment. It's basically a server-side connection, but it reduces the development work. Once you have all of the connections uh, and that data into um, our systems in a safe and reliable way, then really measurement can start. And I want to call out one thing first. Um, you know, fundamentally, we aren't any doing anything different from a you know tech stack-wise and ad solutions capability-wise from a like actual usage perspective. What is different is our community. It's the flavor to how our results show up. It's the, beha the user behavior that really sets up TikTok itself and TikTok results. Um, and how we show up in third parties also uh, emerges from that. Um, you know, we have been working really hard over the last year and a half to you know, effectively enable advertisers to measure the true outcomes that they see on TikTok. To give you a few examples, um, you know, we launched um, a, a really powerful attribution portal called Attribution Analytics uh, that sits under any you know, a TikTok ads manager user. They'll be able to see that under Analytics tab, and it it is the you know the only place to find deep conversion insights on TikTok um, of TikTok ads. And then we are continuously adding new metrics uh, to Attribution Analytics. I, I mentioned this earlier, so we um, you can compare the different compare the performance of different attribution windows. And I want to call this out too. We, we mentioned, uh, you know, what do people get wrong when it comes to TikTok measurement? Um, you know, that delayed conversion impact, the fact that TikTok drives long-term impact to your business, that can only be captured through long, uh, long, longer attribution windows. 
and we have this product called attribution analytics that people can see um, how long it takes for a conversion to happen. Um, you know, your windows could be set at, and I'm being very practical over here, so mm -hmm. stop me at any time. But um, your you know optimization window could be set at seven day click, one day view, and then on attribution analytics you're seeing your conversion goes up to 28 days. And you know we pr we show as far as 90 days. That was I was that like was. I'm ready for the number. What is the number? How <laughs> long days. can we yeah. have that attribution? Well, you That's, can think about. So yeah. our default is seven days, but our guidance right. is you know. And we, we are continuously revising our default setting too. Recommendation is longer the better uh, in this well, case. It depends on, and it also depends on the type of business you have. Yes. Right? Mortgages sure. take a long time. Credit cards take a long time. Big, cars take yes. a long time. So like, again, depends. If you're an impulse buy, shorter, of course. Absolutely. That's your lifestyle. Sure. But if you have a big budget item, average order values of a couple of thousand, yes, you definitely want. A Absolutely. longer window. For sure. Yeah. Um, it's longer than 28 days. Correct. And we give you that option. So you have that visibility. Yeah. So right. um, you know, once you have set your optimal attribution windows, then we also recommend you know, enabling view through attribution into optimization. Because as you know, we've all talked about this power of view is really, it's um, on TikTok is, sorry, the views yeah. are powerful on TikTok. And enabling click through and view through you know, really helps you harness that um, engaging user behavior. Um, and then from there on, you know, have your you have your basics at that point. You've set up your attribution and then you're seeing insights firsthand directly. And then you'll be able to see touch point to conversion. So how many ex exposures, touch points it takes for a conversion. And then we're also, you know, we're so excited that we announced um, post-purchase surveys. It's our uh, closed beta right now. So it's only available for Shopify advertisers. And it appears on attribution analytics. Um, like I mentioned, we try to make it easier for advertisers to access all conversion insights in one place, um, and so that and those are dis actionable decisions um, that they can make. So post purchase survey shows the really the power of TikTok in driving uh, you know actual sales on their website. Post purchase surveys appear after a, a, a customer makes an online sale uh, on the website, and then it gets reported to, in our systems. Um, it also shows consideration time. Which is quite powerful, especially during holiday periods. Um, you know, last year we did a, a meta study with one of our partners, and we saw that you know, what are the categories and verticals that we see um, are really seeing at success during Black Friday, um, Cyber Monday period, um, as well as um, how long does it take? Um, or um, the average view time is around like thirty days plus. Um, wow. For, yeah. So what happens is like you have to build. Um, you have to really build up your moment before the holiday season to be able to capture that. And I guess for savvy e-commerce advertisers, this isn't new news. Um, you know, people have been around the block. This is not those the carts, first time. those carts start getting built. That's a right. Long time I, the wish list, right? That wish list is important. I saw a holiday sign uh, yeah. this this weekend in Brooklyn. So this, this is Wait, happening. Is it like a pumpkin holiday. spice season holiday already? Like there's <laughs> two weeks I away. Yeah. yeah, you skipped pumpkin um, spice holiday. And these are really just still like, we're <laughs> still at the reporting level. Uh, do we have another three hour for me to walk through? <laughs> well, all? <laughs> but just to... Um, wait, wait, so we to don't, you got to talk faster. <laughs> Sorry, okay, okay. Uh, I need to cover, so comfort service, but yeah. I also need to uh, mention uh, another beta that we have is our conversion lift studies. We have been testing these for over a year now. And again, super excited and humbled to see how the ecosystem has embraced conversion lift testing with us. Um, and also huge props to our measurement product team for bringing this in its speed to launch is incredible here, given the our auction uh, lifetime. So essentially, advertisers can run lift incrementally the testing on the platform directly uh, through you know, marketing science teams and understand uh, and validate attribution results. Incrementality helps you validate if what you're seeing on, you know, you mentioned um, business metrics versus um, yeah, I mean, vanity if I, metrics. If I touch back to what we said, what we were speaking about earlier, test, learn, iterate. Yeah. No better way to test what works for you on this platform mm -hmm. than incrementality studies. It gives you a mm -hmm. way more scientific method, uh, a tried-tested, true scientific method, I would say, than simple A-B tests. Um, right. To understand which strategy is working best, which objective drives better value for yeah. you. Um, I mean, that's what we pride ourselves on, incrementality. We have a user base that you don't find anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and if I were to give a simple framework, so 
you know, fundamentally, uh, you know, set up data connections, uh, understand the limitations of you know, traditional web, web analytics tools or click-based measurements, and look at attribution analytics on TikTok to see the, full, the insights into purchase, and then run incrementality tests, you know, conversion lift, and maybe conversion lift isn't eligible for you, then, you know, we recommend geolift testing. This is also super common across uh, TikTok users, TikTok customers, uh, post-purchase survey, you know, leverage, so if, if you're on Shopify, it's an easy feed, um, really takes a minute to set it up. Um, and then look at third parties. And, and we mentioned that, you know, contribution versus attribution, right? Um, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, one of our favorite thought leaders in measurements is Ben Dutter from Power Digital. He, he likes to say this, and we learned a lot from Power Digital team. Uh, so again, huge shout out to them. Uh, attribution, contribution. We don't like that much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we like Power Digital. They're actually a partner of ours. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, and that's it. And then calibrate. Um, so calibration. I know you're going to laugh again. <laughs> I said calibration. <laughs> Your bank account. Um, that's it. You're good. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> Good luck to your producer. So TLDR, <laughs> leverage measurement. Uh, test Kevin leverage. enjoys a challenge, Bahar. Because we have, you guys, okay, we've never been public with our measurement solutions. Um, Bahar gets very excited when we really, talk about this because a lot of least, people don't know what we have. She's revealing like way too much. Like, you know. Oh, I have shared These nothing. are like SEC um, violations here. Uh, like, what are we doing? What? You've shared nothing. Tell us, tell us the. Come on. Nobody will. Nobody listens to this show. <laughs> really, <laughs> nobody will know. You know, we're it's, not seeing anything. The, the reality is, uh, we're doubling down on the ecosystem and expanding partnerships beyond. Because mm -hmm. we know, look, platform attribution is one thing. Platform experimentation is another thing. That's right. But beyond that, nobody's now the measure the the digital ecosystem here now is always going to look at third parties and verify the results uh, across the board so what we are doing is literally doubling down from the biggest partners all the way to the smaller folks who work with the smbs the mid-market tier advertisers you know so you can Bahar mentioned Fospo is a, a Fospo is one. She mentioned Rockerbox is another. We also have partnerships with big MTA partners around the world, and that partnership ecosystem is expanding. Um, so these are all partnerships to help us help advertisers close the gap that we mentioned earlier, the discrepancy to uh, you know site analytics tool that they might see, uh, the views that don't get any credit. Once we work with MTA partners, they're able to see that. So you know Tula is a, a PNG skincare brand. The, I shouldn't say PNG. Tula is a client of ours who, are, who also use Rockerbox, for example. With after our integration, they were able to see five x improvement in their ROAS. Um, you know, mm. is that it? Then, like, it's attribution, uh, but and all be all. Um, that's you know, that's not what we say either. So then, you know, next step is then run an incremental test to understand with your ROAS is your business also growing, and then from there create a multiplier and then use that to again, calibrate your, <laughs> your attribution. Um, mm -hmm. Test, learn, iterate, and we have Test, the tools learn, to iterate. help you do it. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk specifics. You let's hinted at a specific there. Uh, I, want, I want to find out from you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of a brand using all the the measurement tools that we're talking about here, like specific, get as specific as possible. You don't have to necessarily say the brand and give away like the store, but P people help that helps them visualize like how they can use the tool. So talk to me about like what they did, how they did it, what the attribution window was the 90 day thing. I didn't know. Like, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So, and I have to like, even though I'm asking another question, I'm curious <laughs> about that 90 day is that's broken down by view and by click, I have to assume right. somewhere along the way. Okay, got that's it. That's right, yeah. You know, tens of thousands of advertisers use that attribution analytics, that's the tool I mentioned, every day. Yep. So uh, it's still underutilized though, you're so right. I can, I can give you two examples and they both followed a very similar pathway with us. Yeah. Um, Okay. One I don't is want a, like big, big brands. Yeah. What, like, one, is a, one is an e-commerce brand out of Austin. Uh, it's a t-shirt. Okay. Company. Yeah, I'll leave it there. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a, oh, I know who they are. <laughs> okay. You can use uh, them. Go uh, ahead. Uh, and there are a few other, uh, uh, and another one in their ilk, uh, we'll say with a similar size type of business, that's more of a makeup brand. Um, 
but they follow the same logical workflow, which is number one, they set up their data connections and in a, in a way where they were able to track their full funnel user journey. And I'm talking every, not just, you know, your view content, your add to cart and your purchase, but mm -hmm. hey, site page views, your wish list, your search to really understand where users are going on their website and where they're dropping off. That was number one. Number two, they then calibrated where they were today with their you guys like that journey. term by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we're very scientific in the measurement <laughs> uh, well, but establish the like baseline of where they weapons were weapons training here or something <laughs> but anyway keep going <laughs> they established the baseline where where they were with TikTok today uh doing what they were you know using uh, doing business as usual as they were operating business as usual and they did it in two ways number one was basically baselining their last two weeks of click through rates, CPA, ROAS, et cetera, based on the strategy that they were using. Then they did a baseline incrementality test to understand that strategy. What was the baseline incrementality that they were getting? Mm -hmm. That was the baseline. From there, they started testing different, what I would call hypotheses to improve TikTok's outcome. Uh, not, this is not the way smart advertisers do it. Right. Not, not That's necessarily right. not, comparing. Not just a random A B test of like two yeah. different campaigns, but it, okay. Gotcha. And it wasn't, it wasn't comparing us to other channels yet. It was literally trying to improve that baseline. If you're already investing okay. with us, you want to make the, the media more efficient. So this went across a litany of tests. Um, what kind of spend are we talking? A few thousand. Per a few day. thousand bucks for, for the per day, per day, per day. for per the day. entire test per day. And their per recommendations, day. I mean, the recommendation that we typically give is take your, um, take, uh, you know, the learning phase conversions, how, however many learn, uh, conversions you need to exit learning phase, set a budget of at least 20 to one conversions per day, and then, uh, or 10 to one if you're a little bit, uh, a Conservative. little bit on the riskier side, less riskier side, mm -hmm. but enough that mm -hmm. you can get tangible results back and run tests for at least two weeks. How many to, conversions to a day do you need though for the algorithm? Just not to 20. interrupt, but I am interrupting. It's uh, twenty a day. We you you need to get out of learning phase with with fifty conversions. Fifty right. within the in week. a within a oh, seven within day a period. seven day period within Got a seven it. day Makes period. Sense. However, the first few Did days you steal that from Meta. <laughs> but the first <laughs> the first few days is more important. Oh, us. really? Wait. Okay. Say more. Like this if is you're interesting. Only, if you're only getting one conversion in your first two days and two the next day, then there's clearly something wrong. Yeah. Uh, you right. might have a product that nobody wants. Exactly. That's what you're saying. Right. So that, you, you, you want, tracking. that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, hey, your tracking isn't set up. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's so right. you want, you want to, forgot to place the pixel in the thank you page. Very precisely. Uh, yeah. And so they went through a list of different hypotheses, which were different ad formats, different calls to action, different targeting strategies to basically better their business as usual. And then once they got to a point of comfort, um, you know, based on their risk threshold of CPA and ROAS, then they, the next test they did was a point of diminishing return test. How much can we push the media up before we start to see flat lines? Yep. Um, you know, and so like, once you follow that path, you, you start to get a much better sense of what this channel can provide uh, and how far you can take it. And, and more importantly, where we fit in the broader media ecosystem for you. Are we more profitable? Are we driving more users for you? Are we driving more incremental users for you? Those are answers that you then have on your back end based on you know, your cross-channel mix. And then right. based on what Bahar is saying, if you have this, and they do, they have multi-channels that they're testing, obviously, and then they have a third party where they're aggregating all channel results. That's right. They can start to really see TikTok. Uh, and where TikTok okay, is. so what were the results? <laughs> thousand dollars a day incrementality testing i get it yeah i find it funny that you guys do uh <laughs> meta testing but anyway that's just a side note um but well, we so, from, so what were the result like what was the before and after what did they discover and how long we did that take a non sorry go ahead and how and long how did long? it take i would say we went from uh, almost a no or a zero liner on their media 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 plans hmm. to now. So being, zero budget or zero. Yeah, or basically just like someone they were testing percent. once and once in a while. And, you know, once okay. they had other little test budget lying around, they might throw some dollars at us or mm -hmm. only do it at, during like peak season Got it. or holiday season. Dipping the toe in the water yes. and then to for both channels and always on player. Okay. 
right? Uh, and that, that, that to me is a win for us. If we can show you sustainable return on your business and not just a click-through metric, we clearly have unlocked something and unlocked value for you. And but that, it came, how much did their business increase? Now, this came here. from, this came over the course of two to three months of testing. Two, three business. months of testing. Okay. okay. But you, you, I mean, I don't think there's any channel, especially a new channel that you're not used to, you're not used to creating for that you can just immediately jump into and unlock without really understanding what, what you want to test, how you want to. So test. you're talking a $90,000 test really like this is a big test these well, guys went like which is probably a tiny percentage of their overall if i know what this brand is but the point is is like you tested for three months you did incrementality say, testing what yes it, but they only kept investing because we kept proving our value the incrementality oh, okay. so they were getting results yeah they were getting incrementality right off the right off the bat yeah no so as just to clarify um, you know, it's going to be very hard to see incrementality from if you're a net new advertiser on TikTok, you might not even see conversions reported on the third party uh, straight away and or or with a discrepancy. And we've seen discrepancy gap as high as like 79 percent or 80 percent in, in cases. Um, 90K, I think that meant um, that is the scale budget. And now a portion of that is used for A-B testing. And mm -hmm. overall the incremental test will likely happen on the 90K entirely, and that will be a single campaign. Uh, we do recommend always on incremental to test, and we have you know businesses that do that, and those are the ones that are really able to scale. And you mentioned like how did their business grow? If their like overall um, revenue didn't go up, they wouldn't continue investing. And a metric um, that we recommend looking at in conversion lift is cost per incremental conversions. Um, and then how does that compare across different channels? That is a multi-channel um, view as well. A does cost per cur incremental yeah. conversion? Yeah. That's inside, is that inside the analytics? No, that is with a lift study. Okay. Lift study. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's really the way to, would you recommend like somebody who's never done much on TikTok? Would you, would you, uh, would you recommend like this path? I mean, obviously a $90,000 budget over three no, months. I, I mean, it, dep it depends like, on your risk threshold, right? Like, so some, yeah. some, some <laughs> advertisers, and uh, all I'm trying to get to more so is they realize that last click is not the right way to measure for their business. And they understand that uh, a lot of advertisers huh. Right. Your um, clients are smarter than ours, by the way. I uh, realize that. And, and just, Sorry, it's just because me they, and Lauren. <laughs> right? and they, they realize that, hey, you're losing out on a lot of value. And that's not just TikTok, multiple channels where yeah. you're not measuring right. for sure. view or you don't understand the value of a view. So they've done that work and they've learned the hard way themselves over time that this matters. I would say, depending on who you are, depending on your maturity curve, there are different ways of measuring. Incrementality testing may not be for everyone, although we we, we do push for it. Um, A-B testing, split testing. Match market testing. Match market so testing, depending test, on yeah. how you want to get on. My, my, my answer to all these clients is constantly test and iterate. Yeah. There's not a single strategy that works for everybody. Uh, your True. businesses are different. Your costs are my different. My other answer would be there's 1 billion people on Precisely. the platform monthly. So there's a Precisely. lot of people you can mm -hmm. sell a lot of stuff. That Correct. aren't okay. on other platforms necessarily. That's the bigger right. the introducing your brand. True. That's right. And True. they all have different tastes. Well, and they all have different or they are on the other platforms and they're just going from platform to platform. Like I see that all the time, like yeah, in maybe. my house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have to check your DMs on this one to see if someone's continuing with your, you know, which all of that. All the yeah. That's crazy. One conversation across 17 different apps to the same person. <laughs> yeah. It's like I mean, the power of frequency, it. which basically tells you the power of a view. I was about to say it's a view through all day long, because the thing is right. a lot of like, I mean, a lot of what you're touching on this is that um, everyone's looking at last click for yeah. the most part. And that's where the assumptions that TikTok isn't going to work for the business. I'm mm -hmm. only going to show my boss direct numbers that show a 5x row as if for I don't sure. see that right away. Yep. It's not working. Um, but like we had talked a lot earlier about the view through, the power of view through as a conversion data point. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if you touch on that a bit more? Um, yeah. So, you know, view through. Let me through. Um, Actually, can I ask a follow-up question on yeah. that? Yeah. When, you, when you're asking about power of the view, are no, you? Are you no, no, we you, asked the questions here. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. This, Go ahead. This, Sorry. Oh, I just wanted to clarify, like, were, were you asking why, basically, effectively, why views matter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me paint a, uh, let me paint a picture. Uh, hopefully this makes sense. This is the, one of the best ways I can explain this. Um, I'm, I may not land with everyone, but hear me out. You live in Miami. I live in New York. I'm trying to get to Miami. Last click is basically like saying the cab that I took from Miami International to your, your studio is their sole reason I got there. Mm. All right. It doesn't take into account. I like Mark. this analogy. I you know. I was like, this is so good. This is it does good, not take into account good. my my research that I did for flights. It does not take into account mm-hmm. the Uber or the taxi that I took from my apartment to the airport, nor the mm-hmm. flight that I took over to Miami. It solely mm-hmm. says the flight that I took, which, by the way, was the most expensive part. Um, <laughs> right. Right. That's um, right. Yeah. The one you're not giving any credit to, like Zero a 1500 credit. mile journey. And it's solely it saying that one cab ride from Miami International to, or the local airport to your studio is the reason I got there. Mm. Uh, and that is why views matter. Views matter. The view through conversion is a misaligned metric. It's like in the land of misfit toys, I think in a lot of different ways, but it's, high, it's super important. Sure. And I think Meta screwed this up and a lot of stupid agencies screwed this up because they want to take credit for a lot of you through conversions, which are basically in many cases like good SEO. And oh, by the way, I just so happen to see your, you know, your ad on Meta yeah. and or email. And it's one of the biggest problems that we see when we have a new advertiser that we do an audit with is Mm -hmm. separating out view through conversions, especially if they have a sustainable business, Mm -hmm. they've got a good social presence. So it's cast aside as like poison in some cases. But when you're really talking about the entire customer journey, like the view through is the plane ride, you know, from research, (laughs) it's from New York to Orlando. It's the American... I don't know. What are the American Airlines? AA, the credit yeah. card. You're you're going to that loyalty all day. I yeah. obviously don't have an AA card. I use Capital One. But it's a- th- there's those elements too that get totally neglected. You're so right. For sure. So, I, like I, I try to stay away from like a typical commerce example, but like it's 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 all of those steps that nobody gives credit to, and yet they matter the most. Yeah. And advertisers, yeah, I, I can also say, you know, they continue to underestimate how early we show up. Uh, you might you know, TikTok might be the flight, or it might be the cab from New York, uh, from your place to JFK. But yeah, we do show up early up the funnel, um, and then the majority of that gap goes to search, um, and it's a it's a fairly large gap. Um, so you know, we as measurement product teams, our goal is to provide solutions for advertisers to understand uh, that views matter, uh, how they contribute to a conversion, and then you know what additional TikTok touch points help drive that. Uh, conversion and you know in addition to attribution reporting which advertisers can see VTA and CTA the share um, conversion of studies again we're back to incrementality you will say but it factors in um, all conversion right view through uh, click through so it compasses um, whether uh, regardless of uh, the user behavior also regardless of single source uh, sorry signal source Uh, what I mean by that is we also have to remember TikTok happens on and off platform. So you might have seen a scene on TikTok sign. Uh, we talked about skincare earlier in Sephora. So you know, we live and breathe off of um, o- driving online sales or offline sales. Um, so there's this omni-channel behavior that is continuously increasing and we're seeing more, of, uh, more and more of it on the platform. And using Lyft solutions like incremental tests um, enables you to look at overall yeah. I mean, look, attribution, purchases rather than uh, at, just a, an arbitrary uh, as cre- credit. Attribution helps you understand the contribution of the different touch points, whereas incrementality will help you understand through experimentation the overall impact of your marketing efforts on bottom line and sales. Right? That was like the too long, don't listen. Here's yeah. the most important sentence. Right. Yeah. I mean, at the, at the end of the, it, and, and you have to use both hand in hand. You can't just use one or the other. Um, and that, that is what we recommend doing. 
Well, for me, I I mean, like, I want to know, like, specifically in going into that is, is going to be like, if I'm a new partner, I'm a new advertiser, I want to take advantage of potentially new customers, I don't want to compete on the same platforms that everyone else is, or like, I'm already on those platforms. So are all my competitors. There's this quasi blue ocean of fewer, like, there aren't as many advertisers Mm -hmm. necessarily as these behemoths. But more importantly, it's not just that you're not competing as a behemoth, you're actually competing for new people that may not even be super active on the other platform. So like, I, I feel like as a business to business advertiser, there's a huge opportunity because you have in platform lead generation. And I like, I'm obsessed with in platform lead yeah. generation on other platforms. Yeah. I mean, we have both right. Well, third party and first party. Sure. So we can drive to your website's lead form or, if you so choose, you can just do it directly within the channel itself. Uh, less clicks, obviously, less friction. Yeah. And you have the ability to connect it directly to your CRM feed. So it's it's populating directly into whatever CRM mechanism you have versus having to download a spreadsheet and then mm-hmm. porting it over. Right mm-hmm. now, it's, so the capabilities are all built in, agnostic of which, choice you, uh, uh, which path you go down. Yeah, um, but when you do the website, you have to realize your mobile speed good is your website optimized for yeah and, and drop off devices. rates right your your yeah. website has to be sophisticated enough no thank you exactly mm-hmm. and your and your website has to be sophisticated enough to be able to input my information yeah. in the right. most accurate way etc so yeah but uh, more you, businesses you, are promoting off. content like if they're promoting this content they're taking the content that they're already promoting on like a youtube yeah. channel or on another uh platform yeah. having it on TikTok, you're driving people to TikTok. You're getting in front of new people that might have consumed it Precisely. elsewhere, where it's potentially not as busy. Like yeah. all of that for me is like there's such a really like untapped component. And like coming into Black Friday, is- Cyber Monday, like it's expensive, but is it for business to businesses or sorry B two B side because it's not the same level of competition. Like, I, like I, I'm, I'm the boring old marketer. I've done, like, I've done this for a very long time personally across multiple companies. Um, I, I, str- I push for experimentation because you, you don't want to start a net new channel, and I know a lot of people do in Q4. No, no, you are throwing money <laughs> away right. if that is what you're doing. That's why we're talking about this now. Highly <laughs> recommend starting testing now. Perfect. And this is why the the example, when you asked me, like, what, what did these two advertisers do? I walked through a very thorough step-by-step process that they took because that is what gives them confidence that come Q4 that we are table stakes and we are there. Hmm. Uh, right. And I would say this agnostic of what channel you go on. Uh, if you don't want to just waste money, uh, Right. And Test our now. job as platform partners and our job as product folks on, on this channel is to make sure that the spend that you are uh, uh, spending on TikTok is more efficient for you. Mm. Um, yeah, and that, that is why we say what we say versus just saying, hey, come to us and just give us money. <laughs> well, you do eventually. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I look at it this way. Like every one of our listeners here, I would say probably the majority of them and for anybody else that you guys want to send this to so that we boost our rankings and become the number one marketing podcast on the planet, which we're getting there. Um, you can just shoot this 100 out million to a million downloads. users. 100 million yeah, downloads. 100 million downloads. Uh, is that they are meta and Google focused. Yeah. Makes sense. And we talk about TikTok secondarily to them. No, they're the behemoths. They're the big, you know, they're the 800 pound gorillas. I mean, look, they've been around for 20 years and sure. you know, try tested true proven out. It's hard to get Got away it. from things. It works. Proven, right? I, that's why we talk. That's why we've had you guys on here because I think the perpetual traffic listener is, is undereducated on all of the things that we discussed in the last 45 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. So I would encourage anyone who's listening here, who is looking for ways to scale and your competition might not actually be on this platform is look at the TikTok platform as an advertiser. I mean, I'm pretty excited because we're we we just like I said before, like this is this show is very opportunity for me. So selfishly, I do the show <laughs> selfishly anyway because I learn a lot. The first thing is, but we're we're acquiring a company that TikTok is their number one channel, and it's all of a sudden we're going to become a massive TikTok advertiser. It's like how can we then integrate that into all of our legacy clients, just what you're talking about here has got me really thinking 
Like, how can we do that? And if you're trying to grow and scale, that's usually the reason why people are listening to the show is because they either need to do that because they're trying to do it for their business. They're trying to do it for their boss, you know, or they're a media buyer or an agency trying to satisfy their client. So the point is, is I think you guys, you know, shed a lot of light on a lot of things that I think we didn't really know about here on TikTok. I super appreciate you coming on, on board. How can people connect with both of you guys? Is it obviously uh, on TikTok? Mm-hmm. I would imagine. Yes. But like they want to reach out to you specifically. What's the best way to do that? It's Shiraz at, uh, on the TikTok side of things. Just my first name, last name. Wow, Shiraz you got me. that yeah, yeah. on TikTok? You got that? Uh, wow. I mean, <laughs> wow. I was trying to stamp my, my URL yes. there. Right? Um, just first name, last name on LinkedIn. Um, okay. That's probably where I'm most responsive. Yeah, same for um, me. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, we, we, we love feedback um, and any you know, product ideas or partners that you don't see today on Ads Manager or on the website, please reach out. I'm Baharia on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, thank you for having us and for the opportunity to come and share our side of the story as well. Likewise. Yeah, absolutely. We'll leave links in the show notes for you guys, both of your LinkedIn profiles and obviously your uh, TikTok profiles. And we'll even leave a link for where people can sign up for TikTok advertising if we swayed a few months. <laughs> um, apparently, I'm going to be spending a lot of money on TikTok in the coming months. But uh, make sure that you, wherever you are listening to this show, you subscribe. Subscribe first. Leave a rating. Tell us what you really think. Lauren's great. Ralph sucks. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you do, like we'll read it on the air. We actually have a backlog of, of reviews that we have to read on the air, by the way. Lauren. Uh, so go back and listen to previous episodes. Of course, we'll leave all our links and resources in the show notes over at perpetualtraffic.com. Make sure that you join our telegram group. Uh, Shiraz and Bahar, thank you so much for coming on here today and teaching us some inside stuff on TikTok. And even Absolute though we gave pleasure. you a lot of, uh, it gave you a hard time. We, we really enjoyed having you on the show here. 100%. Uh, so I like these uh, on behalf of Great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it really is. So on behalf of my awesome co-host, Lauren E. Elizabeth Petrullo. Lauren E. Elizabeth? Are we making it Lauren E. E.? Like, ah! Yeah, that was E. Elizabeth. Lauren Elizabeth Petrullo. Ciao! <laughs> Until next show. See ya.